It's the Sean Widmer Podcast. It's a journal by someone that just really doesn't like to write. Hi, welcome to Friday's Podcast. Hello, and it, I'm Sean, and this is Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, the podcast comes out, and today we might have some new listeners. And so I want to full disclosure what's coming up on the podcast today in case you're brand new because we did pick up some new listeners this week thanks to a, a wildly interesting group of people who either like or dislike Jerry Seinfeld. At the end of the podcast, we're going to get to the comments. I mentioned bring the comments. We're going to get to them at the end of the podcast today. And that will be fun. So be excited about that, you Seinfeld fans. It's coming. We had a, we had a fun week, right? The Sean Wimmer podcast, we had a fun week. So thank you if you're new to it. I'm Sean. I'm a husband. I'm a dad. I love hoops. I love skateboarding. I love video games. I love tabletop board games. I love Dungeons and Dragons. And we talk about a lot of these things in the podcast. We talk about news stories. I love any kind of fast food story. We talk about a lot of weird stuff on the podcast. A lot of, a lot of parenting stuff. And just life stuff, because I'm, I'm weird. So we do a lot of that. Today, I'm just going to give you full disclosure, today is a little bit different. My wife's on the podcast, and I just opened the mic for her, and for 17 minutes, she's going to talk about her minivan. For 17 minutes. It's a long time talking about... I think we talk about some other stuff. I do think we talk about some other stuff. I know she's coming on the Patreon episode this weekend, and we talk about not the minivan. We talk about just life and a bunch of things going on, which it's a very fun... I think it'll be a very fun Patreon episode. Uh, Thank you to the people who are supporting the show on Patreon, patreon.com slash Sean Whitmer podcast. But today it's pretty much just minivan talk. So just a heads up, if if you're new to the podcast and you wanted to hear me rip on television more, you know, today's is a little bit different. There you go. You've been warned. We're also going to talk Survivor at the very end of the podcast today because on Fridays I like to do a little recap on what was the episode of Survivor and this week's episode was crazy. So we'll get to that at the end. Michael, I'm not saying any names right now because I don't want to spoil anything for you at all until we fire off the Survivor music. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. We're not doing it yet. We're not doing it yet. Um, before we get to Anna, real quick, I, I enjoy... I, I love riding the car with my kids. They love music. I love music. At some point next week, I want to talk about music. There's been a little walk down memory lane. There's been a walk down memory lane in my life dating back to the, the 90s, early 90s, when all I listened to was contemporary Christian music, and my guy was Michael W. Smith, and we're going to talk a little bit about that next week. So get fired up. Get fired up. All right? It's going to rival minivan talk. Okay? I picked up my daughter today from school, and the second she gets in the truck, she immediately starts requesting songs. And and lately, it's been Bluey. Bluey, Bluey, Bluey. I mentioned the other day, I, I don't hate the Bluey stuff. It's kind of interesting. It, it's okay. The songs aren't very long. So if she gets stuck on one, you're listening to the same one-minute song for an entire car ride. That can get a little tedious. But it's really hard for me to say no to it because she's having so much fun, right? You... You say no because your head hurts from hearing the same song, but when you say yes to the repeat of the song and you look in the rearview mirror at your daughter who's just beaming and singing the song and dancing and you can just tell she's in her own world, it's like, what am I going to do? Be the tough guy who's like, no, you listen to the song one time, we're going to go to the next song because my brain is more important right now than your enjoyment of Bluey. No, but today she got in the car and she said, Dad, can we listen to Taylor Swift? Now, we are a big Taylor Swift family. The Whitmers are a very big Taylor Swift family. I love T Swift. My wife loves T Swift. And we've I mean, we go we go back. We go back with T Swift. We bonded over T Swift. Uh, it's not just like, oh, we like her. I like really love her music. I love pop music. And I think she writes really catchy pop music. I know I know she's polarizing to people, but at the core of it, if you can just take music, I enjoy how it sounds. And so my da- my daughter gets in and goes, Dad, can we listen to Taylor Swift? And I'm hyped on this because it's not bluey. So I'm, we get a, a, a drive of, of you know, a music that an adult would listen to. So I get, I, I'm like, yeah, absolutely, we can do Taylor Swift. I know she has some song that she and my wife listen to. And so I'm like, what song do you want to listen to? And she goes, I want to hear the Doublehead song. I go, oh, the Doublehead song. So I'm thinking, I'm like, is there a new song off the new album that Anna has got her into that is like the Doublehead song or like Double Mint Gum? Or I'm trying to think like, what would it be? Double Play? I'm just, I'm trying to get through this, okay? 
And so I'm like, ah, babe, I don't know what the Doublehead song is, but I know some songs you like. I know you like Karma. I know you like Antihero. Uh, I know you like The Man. I know you like Cruel Summer. And I like Cruel Summer, and it's and it's one they my my daughter and wife listen to a lot. And it was also really nice here today. It's like 85 degrees. So I go, let's go Cruel Summer. So I hit play on it. And, and the second it starts, she's so hyped. And she's like whipping her hair around in the back seat. And she goes, the Doublehead song. I'm like, Cruel Summer's the Doublehead song, whatever. I, who cares? So we're going through, and she's like singing, and she doesn't, you know, she's just kind of humming and loving it. And she's excited, like every single person who was at the Eras tour, when the bridge hits, my daughter gets excited. The bridge for, for Cruel Summer is, is the probably the biggest concert moment of all time. You know, it, and uh, if you saw, if whether you love or hate Taylor Swift, you probably saw clips of the era's tour when the bridge of cruel summer hits and the entire venue of millions and millions it felt like of fans screaming inside and outside of stadiums everywhere just all jumped in with the 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 bridge the i'm drunk in the back of the car and i cried like a baby coming home from the bar right that whole thing and so my daughter's like loving it and she's she wants me to sing it so i'm i'm yelling it back at her and she loves singing the very end all right, I know this. I know she loves doing the very end where you get to the part that goes, I love you. Ain't that the worst thing you ever heard? And then Taylor Swift, so you know, screams that he looks up grinning like a devil, and she loves yelling that. So we get to that part, and I, I do it, and she just screams at the top of her lungs, He looks so great like a double head. And I was like, All right, he looks so great like a double head. Or he looks so great with his double head. That's what it was. He looks so great with his double head. And I thought, what do you think Taylor Swift, like what is my daughter assuming Taylor Swift is singing about? It, does my daughter assume there is some magical guy out there who's like got this weird like fantasy double head where it's either got a face on both sides of one head or it's, I, I don't know what my daughter thinks, but, but. She's like the fan of somebody with the double head. And so now we've got the double head song locked up and she screamed. I, I laughed because I didn't know. And so the rest of the day, she just was running around her house. He looks so great with his double or he looks so great like a double head. So there you go, Taylor Swift. That was our Taylor Swift drive. Now let's talk about a minivan. We are a minivan family. Uh, here is 17 minutes, I believe. 15, 16, 17 minutes of minivan talk coming at you. And then... We will get into the comments that I promised would would I promised they'd be there. I'd promised they'd come at it. The Seinfeld lovers were there. Some some with kids gloves. Michael, Ron, you're going to get credit for being nice, but don't you dare worry Seinfeld fans. Your knucklehead fans, they came out in full force. We'll hear them after we listen to my wife talk about minivans. Okay, Anna, hello. Hello. We are needing to discuss something that I didn't discuss on Wednesday's podcast. Okay. And I held off until today, the Friday episode. Yeah. You got a new rig. Yes. You got a new rig, babe. We've been needing one. Okay, let's talk about the process. We are a minivan family now. I feel like that is the ultimate I actually have something family. to say about that term. About what? Ter- minivan? minivan. Okay, yeah, hit me. Apparently, Kia actually sells the Carnival, which is what we bought, Okay. as a multi-purpose vehicle. They do not call it a minivan. Well, 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 look at that. Take that, That's, minivan. There you go. What would be, do they have one that is a, considered a minivan? I think they have, they used to have the Kia Sedona. I don't know if they still do. Okay. Um, so I don't know. Do you think it's more of a we're just trying to work, move away from the term minivan? Does it have I like think a? That it, sadly, some people like don't. What are we gonna do? About uh, th- the dog? This dog lately has yeah. been. What do you think it is? I don't know, but Joey has away. been more on edge. Yeah, she's than been barking a lot ever what before. Do you, do you need to go out? There's no way she's been out all day. Well, she ate all those Cliff bars. Could we pause it or no? <laughs> we can't. We can't really pause this one yet, just because we because the, the video. Um, okay, so we're just going to listen to her bark? Ah, man. Jove, this has been life with this dog lately. I don't know what, and it was even before the clip, but she came, she ate a bunch of Hux bars. Why don't you pick her up and put her in your lap? Come here, Jovi. Come here. Here, Jove. Go. She might have diarrhea. You think so? Yeah. 
<laughs> okay. All right, now she's in the podcast. Hey, Jove. Hey, Jove. All right, now um, she's part of the fam. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see Jovi. Yeah, this is Jovi. She is, what, 13, 13 14? years old. And yet, annoying as ever. Absolutely, but also the best. The best. Uh, okay, so we think Minivan might, ne- might have a negative connotation. Yeah, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Because they are everything. They really are. They're great. And, yeah. and so we know a bunch of people who have got minivans. Yeah. And and so we've seen we've been around them. We've been around families that have them. Did your mom ever have one? Oh yeah. She okay. had like an Astro van. So oh it was brown. Oh with brown it was brown, not like tan or gold. It was brown with brown interior. Okay. Cloth, and- I believe. Cloth and brown. That is hilarious. Today, when I was driving Olivia to school, we got next to a, a brown. It was just an SUV. It wasn't a, a minivan. And yeah. she said, because they had the windows down because they needed them down, Lord forbid we don't have the windows down when yeah. it's nice out. She said, I've never seen a brown car before. She would have loved Nana's old old rig. She would have loved it. I believe Nana, remember those old, old ones with like legit curtains? <gasps> yes. Uh-oh. Do you hear her? <laughs> Jovi, have you diarrhea on Jovi's me, girl? Jovi's belly is rumbling. She ate. I mean, I, you might. We could start over. We, we can't. We're, I'm going to let her stay for just a little bit here. And if worse comes to worse, we're going to make a run for it. Mad dash. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, but I do feel like she's calming down a bit. Yeah, but her belly doesn't sound belly well. Doesn't I mean, she told us blatantly that she needs to go out. Yeah, she's been out so much. To, okay. Well, well, she's sick. Let's let's uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll finish this. Anna's going to do the Patreon episode for you, Patreon people. Yeah. We're going to get some extended stuff. But I wanted to have you on oh, to talk yeah, to okay. me So yeah. So okay. t- hit me with. Uh, Okay. Hit me with the features because this is this is well. My let favorite. me just start by saying that I loved my old car. Yes, you I, loved your last two vehicles. Yes, and I my but my last car the it was like a little Lexus NX. So I don't know what they call those. They're like not really SUVs. Uh, kind would it be of like a mini SUV. Of I don't know, but I loved it, and it was the first car that I like bought and paid for, like the whole thing. Yeah. And so I just never wanted to get rid of it because I never wanted a car payment. Yeah. It so was nice, right? Nice not having a I car I just payment. loved it. And so then I've been on the market for a minivan. And I feel like I never even really considered an SUV. I, there was maybe sometimes you would see a big SUV and you would say out loud, ooh, I like that. And then within 20 minutes, you would be like, nope, minivan. You always stuck to the fact you wanted a minivan. Maybe the world knows more than me, but any SUV, even the giant one. So my mom has the biggest car of all time. The smallest person with the biggest car. Yeah, what is it, a Yukon? It's huge. And Casey has the biggest car of all time, that Sequoia. But they need it because her children are monsters. But Not bad, they're just very big humans. Both of those are the biggest cars I've ever seen. They still don't have trunk space. They don't. This, which is weird. The only time you can get a third row that fits a car seat and trunk space is a minivan. Correct, because that was the maybe big like thing. a Min- suburban. I've never seen in like the back of a suburban, but I mean, I'm telling you right now, cannot drive or park a suburban because and you thir- know that. third row was important. So that's where this comes in, where it's like, well, I've seen an SUV that has a lot of trunk space. Well, that only has the front row and, and the we back row. The we needed row. the third row. The third row with back space in an SUV. You're right. You don't. Yeah. You don't no. find them. No. Uh, so so you you loved your last car a ton, yes. and one of the great things about it, it kept its value extremely well. Like that was well, it did, and like honestly, if we would have traded it in last year last summer when i was looking yeah when we were moving excuse me <laughs> you and Joby both ate the cliff bars girl <laughs> when we were moving and i just like got an estimate on it because i knew eventually i was gonna have to like trade it in yeah it was ten thousand dollars more then than what i traded in for now no that's how but i'm sure cars were more expensive like everything was so weird yeah so. okay well, you, you go, it was the, hilarious to me. You had been looking for a very long time, all right? So you had been talking about different ones. Yeah. And I would say about three weeks ago, maybe maybe two months, th- three weeks to two months ago, you really locked in on, where you had been thinking about it, but you really locked in on this Kia Carnival. Carnival. Yes. And it was thanks to? 
TikTok. <laughs> the TikTok moms. <laughs> well, because so I wanted to trade my car in and I wanted to continue to not have a car payment because I just don't like them. I agree. So obviously I've had two Lexus cars that I've loved. So I was like, oh, the Toyota Sienna. Yeah, stay that's, in the family. That's the one, you know, whatever. And I have heard great things about those. Unfortunately, they're about 20 grand more than a Kia That's Carnival. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. So I was like, this is crazy. So I went to, I, I had, I did find, I went to Lexus here in Lexington and they had a, a Sienna that had been traded in. Yep. It was used, but it had been traded in. It had like 10,000 miles on it. It was like great shape. Black leather, the whole thing. They quoted me like fifty five grand. Man alive! Isn't that crazy? Wow! So I was like, okay, well, clearly the Sienna's not in the cards. Okay, so so that's that must have been when you really locked in on Kia Carnival because you got locked have found on a that. Used, I did look at like a lot of used Siennas, like for less than that, but most of them that I found here close had like literally one hundred fifty thousand miles on them. They okay. were, which. You know, they last forever, but it was like, I didn't want to really get a car with that yeah, many miles. Uh, makes sense. Okay, so fast forward to you tell me you're going to go look at, you want to well, go. Well, how many nights last week did I say, let's go to Car Town Kia? It was hilarious. We would go get ice cream and we'd, we'd get in the car to go out or go wherever with the kids. And I always was skeptical to say yes, because I knew that once I was in your car, you were in control of driving I it. I to go to Car Town Kia. And I was like... I, I'm going to burn my, myself one time. I'm going to say yes to go get ice cream or go to Nana and Papa's or wherever it is we're going to go for the night, an adventure, and it's going to turn into car shopping. And I just like to browse. So you finally went. Well, so I found online five carnivals that were at the Car Town Kia that's like right down the road. And I yep. was like, great. So that was like this weekend, this last weekend. So on Monday, was it Monday. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to go look at these because, it, you know, I go and they're like, oh, yeah, all of those sold this weekend. They're like, it is crazy. They like come, we get them in and then they're gone. The TikTok moms. Well, TikTok showed me a lot of vans yeah. when it started to catch on that I was interested. But it was the Kia carnivals that I was the most excited about. So, and, and real quick, because we didn't even even mention this, your car would not have fit three car seats. That, not, that's not, that's it, been it our big issue. Literally, there wasn't even no. like clips for there it. Was, there it was, was not. Made it wasn't for three. like oh, it would be tight. There was it. There was no as way. much as sometimes I feel like Olivia would just want to roll around in the back. That's illegal. Correct. And uh, so yeah. with three on with three, the, we, there was going to need to be no a change. Way. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, you go. So, go there just because I'm like I'm going to look at these vans. They're all gone. He's like, we have this used one. So he's like, do you want to just drive it? And I'm like, sure, whatever. So we drive it. It's super nice. It's like, you know, leather inside. It's red, which, you know, I'm more of a neutral gal. But we're driving it. And he's like, yeah, this one's listed at, like, again, it was like 50000 Man, It was alive. insane. And I'm like, why? And he's like, well, it has this and this. You know, it had the TVs. I was like, don't care about the TVs. Really. I mean, my kids would kick those off so fast. So... Anywho, I'm like, okay, well, I'm not buying this. And then they had that, like, you know that, like, what is that gray color that's so popular? Like Kias have it. Like a... It's like the weirdest color, and it, it's very polarizing. I feel like people either love it or hate it. It's not for me. They had a used van that color, and I was like, can't do it. Not that color should matter, but, like, it does. Yeah. Well, if you're going to spend money on it. Correct. So I'm like, he's like, okay, let's look at your car. He gives me a quote on like what they would give me if I traded it in. And we're kind of like looking. He's like, let's look and see like when we're going to get the new, like more carnivals in. I'm like, great. So we're looking through. Here's one in June. Here's one in May. Like whatever. He's telling me the colors. I'm like, okay. Um, and this random man comes over and he's like, we literally had one that just came in off of whatever it had all the plastic on it it even had plastic on the wheels no way yeah wow and so plastic wheels i was thinking a a black but yeah. it was white you've got all white cars i know but i was kind of thinking i would do black cars yep that's not gonna work putting jovi down she wanted to get down she just tried to she just tried no to she down. was just okay 
Um, so it was white, black leather interior, and it had it seats eight. That's huge. I love Amazing. It. So yeah, give me the features in it. That's what that's what I was gonna ask right off the off the bat because well, people so, have to text me and go, "What are the features?" I go, I, I don't know. know. I mean, I w- you know I didn't really get a ton of the like bells and whistles. Obviously, yep. as far as like technology goes, like I didn't get none of the TVs or anything like that. Our kids would. I mean, I don't. No, they don't need the they TVs don't care. in there. Yeah. Uh, for, if so, they need a TV on the long road, we'll just throw them their tablets. What I like is there's a bench seat in the back. Okay. And then. Three seats across yeah. in the middle, but you can take the middle seat out, so it creates two bucket seats if you want. Which is great. But if you need the two full rows, you can fit six people in the back. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, we probably never will. Or you can fold the seat down, and it has, like, uh, cup holders and stuff. Which is cool. Which yeah. is cool. But we need the back row. Yeah. So, so that's- there's that. And you and know, you finally got Apple. You finally got Apple car. Apple car. Isn't that funny you that I've never had that? Apple my old car did not have that. And for someone you know who what? is my... on the phone the entire time they drive for work, like you get in the car and you're on the phone for work, yeah. the entire time you drive. So you needed some kind of better. Oh, so bad car speaker because you were well, having and to the put navigation. Your phone on speaker. Oh yeah, and the navigation's huge because you're. And, and I'm not. It's not your it. forte. No. So. I mean, you know what I did notice is it doesn't have an automatic like where you press the button and the trunk comes up, and I've never not had that. Can I tell you? What? I almost came in last night after unloading the groceries and said, thank goodness this car has a, a, a back trunk that just lets you close it. So I love, for me, I love the minivan where it's got the handle. And I, you can just, you pull it down on your own like you're spinning the wheel. And What if you have 15 things in your hand? It's a lot easier to just go boop. That's true. That is true. For sure, but I love being able to just like. Or I always feel bad about like the Target pickup people. They had a way easier time when they would oh, they, load oh, my yeah, stuff, and that's they'd true. be like boop, and now they're like, uh, "Where's that's the true. button?" And it's like, I don't have one. That's true. Well, we're a minivan family now. We're a minivan family. And it's new, which I, which excites me. I didn't o- know if I would get a new one or not, but Olivia can't believe the whole side of the car opens up, and, and the door is she just a monster. It. She thinks that it slides open. That tickles her. To high heaven. Why do those scare me a little? The more that I was thinking about it, I'm like, do people get, do children get injured in those? Uh, do you think they like clothes on them? Yeah. I don't know. Well, so Luke, Casey's little boy, was kind of like playing, you know, he just loved the button, button, yeah, button. Of course. And it was like, rrr, rrr, rrr. and it like started to close. I swear it was closing on him. I mean, Casey pulled him out, but I was like, would that have crushed you? I have, I imagine they have to have some kind of safety feature might not have paid for that (laughs) no car payment you know all right well i'm proud that you got the minivan you're a minivan mom or sorry what was it mid-size or what is it uh uh multi-purpose vehicle i'm I'm very glad you got the multi-purpose vehicle yeah and so now you can cruise around lex with the whole squad and eventually their friends I love and it. And it will just be jam-packed with human beings. We can put a stroller in the back. Screaming. Olivia liked that there was AC in the back. She really liked that's that. That's actually huge. She was like, oh, I can feel it. I was like, yes. Yeah, that's actually huge. Because yeah. we have to figure out, okay, uh, parents, with three kids, we've got the two bucket seats in the back row. We've got baby woods on the way. Huck is No, next. Olivia told me she wants to be in the back. Okay, so she goes back. She, that's she goes what she back. wants. Because, you know, you got to put the one in the back that maybe we sh- she can buckle herself in. Yeah. I just thought maybe Huck because then we might not be able to hear him. Well, Actually, what about Jovi? Um, Jovi's crazy. Okay, that's it for the podcast. If you want to hear more oh, Anna. Was, oh my gosh, well, that was so fast. if you want to so hear fast. more Anna, Patreon. Patreon episode comes out this weekend. Oh, okay. Uh, we're going to get into some nitty gritty. I'm, I'm going to tell you real quick right now. We are going to talk a little bit of music. Um, we you got a membership this week we have to discuss. I want to talk television with you, mm. and I need to talk w- some some backyard shenanigans with you as well, okay? okay. So that's going to come up on the Patreon. That'll be out this weekend. Uh, you can catch more Anna. All right, I'm going to go let Jovi out before she throws up in here. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Enjoy your minivan. Kelly's, what are you into? I'm into the comments, people. I'm into hot water. I'm into stirring the pot. So... I want to, before we get into the comments, and we read the comments at the end of every episode, and I love, I love the comments. You can go to seanslife.com and comment there. 
you can go, if you're listening on Spotify, you can comment on the episode you're listening to, and then the next episode will we'll read the ones that are brought up. And you can also comment on YouTube where we're going to be hanging out a lot today. You can comment on YouTube. And all of this comes from, well, most of these things come from the fact that on Wednesday's episode, I had, I, I was, I, I, I stand by it. I took, I took umbrage. I don't know what is it. No, I'm not umbrage. I had beef with Jerry Seinfeld. I took offense. There it is. I took offense to the fact that he came out and I thought he was being an old man. And he's like, I, my show was great. And now I could never write the show I wrote back then. I could never write it today. And I took, I took offense to that. And I just think it's lame. I think he's kind of lame with it. I think it's, um, again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to rehash the whole thing, but there's so many networks. There's so many streaming platforms I believe if you look at how comedy is going right now, the famous people in comedy, Shane Gillis, if you look at this, Jerry Seinfeld, I don't think offensive is really the thing anymore. Plus, you've got so many media outlets that if you actually have a funny show, someone is going to pick it up. Netflix, Peacock, Paramount. Somebody's going to pay to have your show if it's actually funny. You might just not have a funny show that you're trying to write, Jerry. That I mean, that's... So anyways... I took offense to his comments, and I was like, look, I'm not going to just sit here and let Jerry Seinfeld spout off. I'm going to, to this small little audience, go, you know what? I, I think there are great comedy shows being written, and I think there are funnier shows than Seinfeld that have come out since Seinfeld. I didn't even mention all of them. I, I'll, I'll throw a network one out there. It's not as funny as Seinfeld, but Abbott Elementary is really funny. Really, really funny. I, and I, I even, even me, someone who's not a Seinfeld fan, even I can understand Seinfeld is funnier than Abbott Elementary, but Abbott Elementary is really funny. I think Ted Lasso was funnier than Seinfeld. So Ted Lasso funnier than Seinfeld. I think that's a I think that's a truly brilliant show that again was written in a time where Jerry Seinfeld says you can't write comedy because everyone's going to be offended. Shut up. So let's get to the comments, shall we? Let's start with this one right here from Victor Marcha. This is from YouTube. Why has anybody even listened to you? Seinfeld's a classic and always will be. All right, so that's our starting point for this one today. Um, let's go to this one from Adam. He says, it's always good to know someone's opinion. That was uh, said tongue-in-cheek. Tongue-in-cheek. Ammo 4397 said, you only see that because you're old. I am old. I'm 42. I don't quite understand I don't quite understand why me, <laughs> I don't quite get how me supporting the new shows, I, I, I don't really understand how me supporting the new shows is like a thing that old people do. I would have accept, expected old people to support the old shows, but whatever. This one says, you lost me at Modern Family, Curb, Seinfeld, The Office, 30 Rock, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Arrested Development, Parks, and Rec. You lost me at Modern Family, dot, 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 Curb, Seinfeld. Oh, those are the ones he likes. Curb, Seinfeld, The Office, 30 Rock, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Arrested Development, Parks and Rec. Yeah, maybe Modern Family, a bit of a stretch. I would, I could see, I wouldn't fight for Modern, I, I don't think I would actually fight for Modern Family over Seinfeld, although I do think the funniest Modern Family episodes are funnier than the funniest Seinfeld episodes. I do believe that. And I do want to, let's just get in there real quick before we, re we read the rest of the comments, because this was something that was brought up to me from one of my friends via text where it said, stop being Skip Bayless. That's not what I'm doing here. I, 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 that would drive me crazy. If I was being Skip Bayless and I was just saying stuff to cause controversy, I don't love that. I, I, I believe, I believe what I was saying. My, my take isn't coming from a spot of just trying to stir the pot. I really believe Jerry Seinfeld was way off his rocker with his commentary. I really think that he came across extremely bitter and petty. And so I wanted to be petty right back at him. Um, let's see here. Here we go. This one says this, uh, Seinfeld. Uh, this one might be, let's see. I don't know. Let's see if it's a support one. K dog 6781. Seinfeld is under the surface comedy. Most shows are very on the surface. For instance, the, in the contest, Jerry says men have to do it because it's part of their lifestyle. Like shaving. Elaine says, I shave my legs. And Kramer says, not every day on the surface. You think Kramer, Kramer was referring to shaving, but he was referring to it. That's gold. If you don't find that 
kind of you don't find that kind of humor in other shows. With that said, and not with not that anyone cares, but my top shows are which are all comedies are Andy Griffith's show, Seinfeld, that '70s show, Two and a Half Men, King of Queens, and The Office. I could watch those six shows over and over, and actually, I do. I think that's great to know the other great shows. K Dog, because I think it shows you know what kind of comedies you like, and I I think those some of those are great. I think that '70s show is fantastic. I loved King of Queens, and I really love The Office. I think The Office is very funny. Yeah, that's an okay funny thing from from Seinfeld, right? I, you know, he said Seinfeld is under the surface comedy. So now here's where I'm going to have a problem with this, because if you're going to go under the surface comedy, you're not going to beat Arrested Development. Period. Uh, I, you're just you're not. That show is the wittiest, the the most witty television program I have ever seen for under the surface comedy. Now, I bet you overall, like a show like Curb Your Enthusiasm, it, it is with the whole package with all their jokes, is probably funnier. But if you're just going under the surface, so you're really digging deep for the pure clever, you're not going to get more clever than Arrested Development to the point where they almost got started getting so clever you didn't get any of the other just regular comedy that just, okay, I need to laugh real quick for just a dumb joke. Man, Arrested Development, though. I, I That's a show I could watch once a year and I would never get sick of it, at least the first three seasons. All right, this one says this from Randy Legend. Back in its prime, Seinfeld just clicked with the times. It had everyone in stitches with, this, with its spot-on humor tapping into all those little quirks of society that we couldn't help but laugh at. And boy, did people tune in. The ratings were through the roof. But things have changed since then. Nowadays, we've got more TV channels, formats, and internet content than we know what to do with. Some of it's hilarious, some not so much. Still, even with all this new stuff out there, Seinfeld's legacy lives on as the gold standard of comedy. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is not... This really quickly turned into me... This is uh, happens a lot. And I used to always... I used to always... Like put the asterisks at the end, you know when you like I compare two Gonzaga Bulldogs. Oh, Corey Kispert is better than Kevin Pangos. But like, like, I said that statement, people hear me say Kevin Pangos sucks. That's what people hear, and so I used to always have to caveat that with like before saying any of it. Both of these players are great players, but so like Seinfeld, I, I'm not a huge fan of it. I, I don't think it's an elite comedy, but it's a good show. It's a good show. It's funny. It's made me laugh a lot. Okay. It's made me laugh a lot. Uh, again, people heard me say, I think their show's funny. And all they heard me say was Seinfeld is the worst show ever. That's not what I said, but that's how people listen. So and I'm not saying Randy did that, but I do think it would have been interesting to see the reaction to Seinfeld in today's society where you have this much content, this many things, and you also have the internet and you have social media. Social media will pick across, pick apart anything. All right, let's see what we have here. Uh, Mike Gowan-XO9YV says donk dot dot dot. All right, good. Called me a donkey. Hilarious. Got me. Got me, dude. God, I can't bounce back from that. Uh, uh, Nicholas said this. All those shows you just listed came out after Seinfeld and were partially inspired by Seinfeld. Yeah, that was the kind of the whole thing. Uh, the whole thing was that Jerry Seinfeld said there weren't, there weren't, uh, you couldn't write edgy comedies or you couldn't be offensive in comedies anymore. And I think you can. Now, I know The Office was before kind of the, the Karen days, the cancel culture days, but I don't think that really ha- is, I, I don't think that's happening anymore. Right now, I think we've kind of, I think we kind of have blown through that. I don't really think people care anymore. I think, I do think people want to live in a world where they want to live in 2021 for some reason. There's so many people I think they lo- they secretly loved cancel culture, so they like want to just still be there, and they don't really all the way. They they want to say, I can't wait till we're not in cancel culture anymore, and everyone's like, Well, we kind of are not in cancel culture anymore. And they're like, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Because then if we, I need to be able to complain about it. Anyways, I don't know if that's what Nicholas was doing, but I was doing it. Uh, let me find these ones. I do want to go to TikTok. Cause TikTok had some comments, um, that made me laugh. Where are they at here? Uh, cause mainly one from this one. User 920-243-747-9309 says this. How is this a real podcast? Yikes. Fair. I question that a lot too. Thank you to those of you who support the podcast. Patreon.com slash Sean Widmer podcast. This has been a long episode. I apologize. It's only going to be longer with Survivor Talk. 
Uh, coming out this weekend, Anna's on the Patreon episode, and that is for Patreon subscribers. Not only do you get the benefit of just helping me out, helping support the show, keep the show going, I really appreciate that. You do get bonus episodes. I think they're okay. They they've got decent comments. So thank you. Oh, I didn't mention Michael text me. I use my camera to to record. So Michael, I can't read your text. Ron did hit me up on the, I didn't read all the comments. Ron hit me up on Sean's life.com said, I don't really care about being relevant, but I'm a big Seinfeld fan and I get he's not for everyone. Not the greatest take, but I love that you share your honest takes. Thank you, Ron. Keep them coming. I'm guessing you will not be watching Seinfeld's pop tart movie this weekend. I will not. I will not. I just don't, I didn't like B movie at all. I, I, I did think some episodes of Seinfeld were funny. And this week I watched three episodes of Seinfeld and I didn't laugh during them. Absolutely. I just think top to bottom, I think top to bottom, a new episode of Always Sunny in Philadelphia in an era where Jerry Seinfeld said you can't be edgy and you can't, you're going to offend everyone. The left, the left is going to be so offended. I watched this last season of Always Sunny and they're, they're so funny. They're so funny and they are semi-offensive. And they are offensive, offensive. And no one cares. People just laugh at Always Sunny. So I, I Jerry Seinfeld's off his rocker. Anyways, uh, Ian said this. Sam's Club, uh, Sam's Club codes found lower left above barcode. N is permanent stock. A is active. What is this, Ian? What did you send me here? N is permanent stock. A is active. No ETN markdown. C is clearance. S is seasonal. O is one time. What is this? What am I reading right now? This I probably should have read this before. I think he's giving me okay. I'm just I'm, Ian. Thank you for the comment. I believe you're giving me Sam's Club tips that I don't necessarily need to read right now. Even though I just did read them, these are going to be things I need to copy, put on my phone, send to my wife, and she is going to praise you so much for helping her out at Sam's Club. Since we are members, we talk about that on the on the Patreon episode. Thank you for listening today, Ian, Ron, the people who who, who made the comments. Thank you for participating. I love when people comment on the pod, even the bad ones. I. I there's a lot of times I would be in bad moods over the past 15 years. I love the bad comments because I would be in bad moods and I would say, you know, I just got beat up at work today. When I worked for the morning show, I got beat up. I would get beat up. I don't know. I have some, there's something about my personality that if you really meet me, I think you, you, I'm, I'm, I think I'm enjoyable and I think I'm pretty nice and I'm like very caring towards people. And I really care about like my friends and family, and I really want to be there for people. But there is something about my personality that does not show that side. And when I'm on the on the radio or on the podcast, it, I, I am I get ripped apart. So it was kind of nice to dip back in this week and just get beat up for about forty eight hours and go, wow, wow, there it was. Kind of fun. All right, can we talk Survivor? Oh my gosh. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. What an episode. The The biggest meltdown in Survivor history goes on in this episode. And so I'm, I, I'm again, we talked about this podcast. I'm not afraid to share my opinions. My opinions are real. This is what I really think. Liz is crazy. Liz is a crazy person. And I didn't feel any empathy for Liz at all. At all. I don't know what the overall perspective on what happened was. I don't know what the the percentages are in terms of Survivor fans supporting Liz or not supporting Liz. Here's what I thought. And and if you and if you watch the episode, obviously we're talking about the reward challenge. <coughs> Q, who has dug his grave, he's got <coughs> no chance of winning. He's dead water, he's, he's floating dead in the water. He wins the reward. Of course he does. And he gets to take three people to the reward, which is Applebee's. Somehow Liz is this diehard Applebee's fan, goes every Wednesday night to Applebee's with her daughter. And so she is going crazy because Liz is allergic to a bunch of food and can't eat coconut and hasn't eaten in 72 hours or whatever it was. And she is starving. And she went on to a show. She chose with all the allergies. She chose to go on to a show where they already talk about. And if you've ever watched Survivor, 
they talk about all the fact the fact that all they eat is coconuts. Like they're like, we are so sick of coconuts every season. And, and she knows she's allergic to them and she decides to go on the show. So she had made this decision to get on the show with her allergies. And at that point, it's on you, Liz. It's on you. You're going to be hungry. In fact, early in the season, she even said, I know I'm going to be hungry. So Q picks Tiffany, Kenzie, and Maria to go with him. And he does not pick a crying, a begging, crying, whining Liz who has spent the whole season bragging about how wealthy she is and how great she is. And he doesn't take her. And she loses it. And to me, I had a really hard time feeling any sympathy for her. I get that she's hungry. I'm guessing a lot of the people are hungry. Now, I do know they're eating coconut. So they have coconut. She doesn't. And that stinks. And that's really hard. I've also heard enough interviews with people like Boston Rob who have said, about this season, why aren't they going around finding more food? There is more food to be eaten on the island. You just actually have to work. You have to work for it. And that the uh, production staff is pretty good at knowing like you can't actually eat that or you can't eat that. So if you find something, they're going to know. And Boston Rob, I forget what, where he was on, if he was on, I don't remember if it was an entertainment weekly deal or whatever, but he was talking about the fact he was surprised they haven't gone out and found like papayas and more stuff like this that are all over the island that you eat when you're on the island because you're hungry. And if you're actually really hungry, you go find food. So I, I, you know, she's sitting there complaining. She's crying. I love that Q, I love what Q did. I think Q did the right thing. He took with him to, he's, you know, like I said, dead man walking. He doesn't really have a lot of hope. And so who does he take? He takes the two people who got him to this point, Tiffany and Kenzie. Now, he's burnt that bridge, and I think even Q knows this is the craziest Hail Mary to even try to extend the olive branch to two people who were his allies. No one else has been his ally that is left on the beach. So he at least has two people who have at one point in time been his ally. You might as well, if you're going to try to build a relationship, go to the people since you've ticked off everyone, Q's ticked off, ticked off everyone, go to the people who at one point weren't ticked off at you. Did it work? No, it didn't work. But I think that was the right play. Everyone else does not like him. So you go to at least people who at one point liked you and you try to remind them of that. And then he goes to Maria, who did the right thing, played the emotional game of Survivor correctly. When Q was down in the dumps, everyone hates Q. He has been an absolute nightmare He's he's a wild card. You can't you can't rely on him. He is he would be impossible to play survivor with. He would be a terrible ally. He is a loose cannon. He has not played the game well. But through all that, Maria does still realize Q at some point is going to be in the jury. Absolutely going to be in the jury. And I mean, unless you're smart and you take him to the very end, which we'll talk about that in a second. But she goes and reaches out to him at a point where he's down in the dumps and just checks in. How you doing? And Maria doesn't like Q. Mar- Q's blowing up her game as much as he's blowing up everyone else's game. I'm sure she's just as annoyed with his antics as everyone else is. But she takes a moment to realize they're in a game and she reaches out to somebody to build a bond and be like, look, in the, the human side of this, I'm going to try to build a little bit of a I care about you as a human so that when you're voting at the end, like you, you remember that Maria was there for you. Well, she didn't even have to wait till the end. The next day is a reward challenge. He wins and he remembers Maria. You are the one person who, when I'm down in the dumps, pouting by myself, you came out and checked on me. And of course he takes her. And then Liz loses her mind. And not one part of me felt bad, felt bad about it. And I was so thankful Q said, Liz, you voted for me last night. Like Liz is throwing this big thing. Like I deserve Applebee's. I've got a daughter. Okay. Well, other people on the show have kids. I'm hungry. Okay. Other people on the show are hungry. I've been to Applebee's. Okay. Other people on the show have been to Applebee's Liz. Maybe not every week like you, but they've been there. I just thought it was really bad luck. Really bad luck for Liz. So I don't know if that's popular opinion or not. And that might make people mad. But that's where I came out on this. I thought Q did the right thing. I thought he took the right people. I'm thankful he did not take Liz. I don't love the idea that Survivor becomes this show where they just have people who are whining and they're 
tired and all this, and they reward them with things. I think that takes away from a lot of the tough part and the strategy part of Survivor. I know new Survivor got really into, let's be love and happiness and everyone loves everyone and we're all kind. They need to get a little of the edge back. And this was a little bit of the old edge back that made Survivor great, where it was like, okay, this is not, this is a game. There's real strategy and real strategy in games might hurt some feelings, but that's kind of how the game runs. Q's terrible at the game, by the way, just for the record. And I think the thing that we learned with the Tiffany blind side, and I think this is the case all the time. It was kind of the case last season with Bruce. If you can embrace the villain, and, and if and I'm I I'm sure it is so impossible when you're out there because you're hungry, you're tired, you're with these people 24-7, you can't escape them. The villains like Q. The, the annoying people who are just causing chaos, they are probably so annoying. But if you can somehow in your brain deal with it and just remember it's for a million dollars, take Q to the end right now. If you, are, if you are Charlie and Maria, you need to latch on to Q and be like, brother, get with us now. You. But a brother... That's everyone, all the boys at the baseball field the other day. What's up, brother? And none of the dads knew it, and I did, and I acted like I didn't know. I probably should have done that in the survivor part. Uh, that's a, another great story. I did it to one of the kids, the sketch deal. And and one of the boys was like, how do you know that? And I was like, well, how did you not know that? It's everywhere. And he goes, that's not a dad thing. And I'm like, it is a dad thing. Your dads are all zeros. They're all squares, dude. Go strike out, brat. Anyways, um, back to Survivor. If you can latch on to Q, if you can latch on to the villain, if you can take the villain to the end, they're not going to get the votes. They're not going to win. But boy, oh boy, that's a great vote to have. That's a great person to have on your side if you can put up with them because they're going to continue to help you. They're a number in a game where numbers are critical. I don't think Q goes home next week. I think it. I think that Charlie and Maria are going to wise up to the fact that if they can survive Q... He is an auto vote for them. And now that you're down to seven people, having three people in an an alliance is huge because you're one number away every vote from having the majority. Also, Charlie's a challenge beast. And Charlie is, man, he and Maria are the two best players. I think Charlie has bumped past Maria as the person I would say is the favorite to win it. I think Kenzie's playing great. I, I, I just think, I don't think she has the connection with anyone that is going to carry her to the end. I think the Maria and Charlie thing is really strong. Uh, I think that that, uh, Liz and Venus aren't great at making alliances. They're just, they, they want, they are so control. They're such control freaks. They want to be so alpha Venus and Liz do. They can't work with people. I just don't think they can work well with people, even though I will give Liz credit. She did jump on board the TIFF blind side. That was really smart by her. That was a great play. Q had pissed her off and she was able to swallow her pride for a moment and make the right game move. So that was a big move by Liz. I ripped her a little bit there at the beginning because I thought it was kind of lame, her begging to get the reward challenge and then yelling at somebody because she's hungry. I do think she made a good move at the end by by voting out Tiff. Survivor's great. Survivor's great. Who had a bad, who had the worst week? Q had the worst week. He is. I mean, he's just not good at the game. He laid around, like like they said, he just laid around. He didn't even try to make moves. It ended up working for him, but at this point, everyone at Tribal Council is calling him the smoke screen to blindsides. He has zero, it's zero percent chance that you can win this game. Zero. There's nobody. Every other person who's left would win against him at at the final at final final tribal. Every single person. So he's his zero percent. So he's had, he had the worst week. Best week was Charlie. I mean, I think Maria had a really good week making some some inroads with Q. I think that was really smart of her. I think she kind of headed this Tiffany vote. But Charlie went in another immunity challenge and just really seeming to have his head on and his and his fingers on the pulse of everything going on with everyone on the island. Ah, uh, he's playing really well. Okay, I gotta go. We got Sixers Heat going, or Sixers Knicks going on right now, and I want to watch the end. Goodbye.